Hello everyone, we're getting ready to look up today with a brand new Uplook video, tackling one of our top 10 lists. You can like the video, subscribe, and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Today, we'll discuss 10 tips for discovering and developing your spiritual gift. All of God's children are in the gifted class. The Holy Spirit has seen to that. But have you discovered yours? The church needs every one of us developing and using our gifts so the whole body, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Ephesians 4.16 Here are some suggestions to move forward in this important area. So let's get started. Our first tip for discovering and developing your spiritual gift, study the lists of the gifts. Obviously, we ought to know what the options are. Uh, that'll help us a lot to uh, discover what our gift is. And uh, we can remember quite easily where the passages are. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, 1 Peter 4. Now, there are some differences. The main lists are in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12. But as we look at this list of gifts, I think it's important for us to realize that God has equipped every believer with a gift. The Holy Spirit has equipped us so that we can all participate in the growth of the body. There aren't two classes of Christians, those who serve and those who get served, like a cruise ship. Um, everybody is in the service department and we should all be looking for what these gifts are and understand them. Number two, look for examples of these gifts being used in the New Testament. That's a great thing, isn't it? We don't just have, shall we say, doctrine. We have practice, the book of Acts, and through the epistles, we have lots of hints of people who are actually doing work for the Lord. We have Timothy who does pastoral care, where that primarily is equipping a local church that is just beginning until eventually the elders become recognizable. Timothy would then say, these are your leaders, and he'd pack his bags and move on. Uh, the Apostle Paul functioned a lot of the time as an evangelist, going out not only preaching the gospel, but equipping the new believers to reach their friends and family uh, with the gospel as well. Apollos was clearly a teacher, uh, able in the word of God, although he himself needed help uh, in understanding some things, and we have him meeting in the home of Aquila and Priscilla. And then Barnabas had a great ministry of encouragement. He was the one who took Saul of Tarsus, the new convert, and introduced him to the saints. He was the one who uh, found ways to encourage uh, other believers like John Mark when he struggled and what a wonderful ministry that is. So lots of examples of people serving in the church and the ministries that they have. Number three, check your heart. Now what do you mean by that? Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 21 says that it's important for us to be vessels that are sanctified and useful for the master or meet for the master's use. In other words, uh, we've considered the fact that uh, we need to be clean and available if God is going to use us. Sometimes I'd stay at a home where we had some friends over the night before and uh, the lady of the house brought out the fine bone china. But the next morning when I went in to get my orange juice, all that china was sitting in the sink. I didn't use it. I bypassed it and I picked a, a plastic cup because while the fine bone china was beautiful and nice to look at, um, it was dirty and not available. Uh, and so very often God will bypass someone who seems to have outstanding gift, but because they aren't a vessel that has been serious about being clean and available, God uses someone else, perhaps with lesser ability, but he accomplishes the work through them just the same. Number four, ask the Lord for wisdom in this exploration. James makes it clear that if we lack wisdom, all we need to do is ask for it. 
And he explains that the wisdom from above is different from earthly wisdom. It's a different kind of wisdom, and it's the kind of wisdom we need. And the Bible says that God gives it liberally, and he doesn't ball us out. He doesn't say, can't you get through a week without asking for more wisdom? Uh, he's very generous with giving us wisdom. And if we don't have the wisdom, the only reason is we have not because we ask not. Number five, just do what's there before you to do. You know, the children of Israel, when they came to the city of Jericho, the Bible says it was all bolted and barred and, and there seemed to be no way in. And the children of Israel walked around the city and the scripture said wherever they put their foot that they were claiming it from, for God. And, uh, but then the Lord said, when the walls came down, go straight in before you. They weren't supposed to be running around looking for the high rent district. And a lot of times people waste their lives um, envying other people's gift. I wish I could be doing that instead of doing what's right in front of them to do. So the scripture says it's not what your eye sees, it's what your hand finds to do, do with your might. So in other words, it's right there, something you can see to do. It's not some extraneous, faraway thing. If you're not faithful in what's right before you, you wouldn't be faithful if you went halfway around the world to do something. So I think this is a crucial idea. Do what's right before you. Uh, don't be envying other people their gifts. Next, spend time with those experienced in using their gifts. Yeah, we have a tremendous wealth around us, people who are actually actively involved in the work. They've discovered what their gift is, and they can show us the process that they went through in determining the call of God on their lives. So I think that's important that we, uh, that we spend time with mature Christians, that we work alongside them, that we're open to their correction. Um, and when we do that, um, the Lord... in not only blesses us, but blesses them as they have an investment in our ministry as well. Number seven, get into basic training for every gift. Mm -hmm. That's something that's so helpful to understand, that whatever gift we have, the basic training is the same. We all have to learn how to understand the will of God from the Bible, we need to know how to pray. We need to know how to depend on the Lord for direction and provision and so on. So it doesn't matter what gift you have, the basic training is the same. We don't have to wait to discover our gift before we begin basic training. So those are important things to catch right at the beginning, uh, and they will be useful once I do develop my gift and, and am looking for opportunities to serve. Next we have... When you have an opportunity to serve, ask trusted older believers to assess. Now, when you have older believers that you trust, that you value their ministry and how they've used their gift, uh, don't be afraid to go and say to them, I want to learn. I, I welcome your correction. The Bible says that... Um, you shouldn't uh, correct a fool because he'll hate you for it. Uh, you correct wise men, they'll take it to heart. So prove yourself to be a wise person by being ready to take correction and improving. You don't want to make the same mistakes for the next 50 years. Number nine, remember the overall objectives of service. Again, there are endless ways to serve the Lord but the same objectives are on every one of those activities. So here are three statements, all taken from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Let all things be done for edification. In other words, building up others. Let all things be done decently and in order, that is, according to God's order. And let all that you do be done with love. If those are the three overriding principles of my ministry. I can't go far wrong. And then finally, number 10, the key to discover your gift is simple obedience. 
It is a remarkable thing when you make a list of the gifts, maybe I'm not sure exactly how many there are, maybe 19 gifts or something for today, you see that every one of us has been commanded to already do every one of them. So it's not just people with the gift of giving who give, or the people who have the gift of helps who help, or the people who have the gift of evangelism who share the gospel. We're all involved in all of these, even in leading. The scripture says, make straight paths for your feet, lest those who are following you are turned out of the way. Everybody's leading somebody, everybody's following somebody. And so it doesn't matter what area it is, even in teaching, every one of us should know why we believe what we believe and be able to explain that. So in every area, we're already commanded to do these things. As we do these things, as we give as we have opportunity, as we help, as we share the gospel and so on, the Spirit of God will nudge us into that area where we have giftedness, where we have an extra measure, so to speak. We don't stop doing the other things. If somebody says, hey, will you help me move the table? Sorry, I found out recently I don't have the gift of helps. We go on doing all of these things. But now we've discovered the basic area that God has given us to serve in, and we should make that a priority in stirring up, developing that gift. I think, um, you know, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 12, he talks about this and he says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So it's the role of the Spirit of God to give us our various gifts. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. So while the Holy Spirit gives us the toolbox, it's the Lord Jesus who sends us on projects. And when we get to the project, we find out that the tools exactly match the job we've been sent for. And then thirdly, there are different activities, but the same God who works all in all. So it's God who gives the increase. There may be one uh, preacher like Noah who preaches 120 years and hardly sees a soul saved, just his own boys. Whereas Jonah marches into the city of Nineveh and the whole city repents. Does that mean that Noah was a bad preacher and Jonah was a good preacher? No. It means that God is the one who determines the end result of our ministry. So that's in his hands. Our ministry is to be faithful and he's the one who brings fruit to our lives. So I think this is a great little distinction here. The Holy Spirit gives the gifts, the Lord Jesus gives the ministries, and the Father gives the results to the work that we are doing for him.